Hello everyone, and welcome to another update of the Tumble Rock Canyon Railroad. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this water tower here. Now, the Tumble Rock Canyon Railroad, in case you haven't been watching my channel, is a ON30 scale layout. And so, you can see here I bought this model kit, because I wanted to build this water tower. Unfortunately, the model kit builds this water tower, which is much too large for my railroad. So I was inspired by the Disneyland Railroad Water Tower, and that's the kind of design I went with. It's been around at Disneyland since 1955 in various different appearances. I first started out with a blueprint that I drew on that graph paper on the right hand side. And then from there, I measured out all the pieces of scale lumber that I needed and started cutting them out. So I did design this thing from scratch, since the model kit does not build the exact size of water tower that I wanted. Again, the water tower that the kit builds is far too large for this tiny little layout I have. It would make everything seem oversized. Here you can see I am measuring out the pieces of scale lumber and then using my Japanese saws to cut them to the pieces that I need. Now the model kit is not plastic, it's a wood model kit. Nothing is pre-measured or cut for you. They just give you the sticks of scale lumber and you have to go from there to cut everything. So that actually made it much easier for me to scratch build my own water tower. I don't have much experience scratch building because I'm still new to ON30 scale. I used to work with HO and N scale as well. And with both of those, I used plastic model kits where everything was pretty much put it together and painted. Here you can see I'm taking some water and adding some India ink to it so that way I can dye it. This is how I stain the wood. You can easily use isopropyl alcohol instead of water but I prefer to use water. Here I stain all the pieces of lumber and then let them dry. And then I'll go back over them again and dip them again. Some of them I'll even dip a third time. Occasionally I'll leave a piece or two completely undipped to make it look more like it is brand new lumber that is replacing a recently rotted piece that was removed. It kind of gives the objects a bit of age. Now you can see I'm using this cardboard dowel. This is the exact diameter I wanted, exactly three inches in diameter for the water tower. So I cut it to the length I need for the height of the tower tank. I sand the top smooth to make it as flat as possible. Next, I take a piece of balsa wood and I'm going to draw the diameter onto the balsa wood to create a bottom. I go over it and trace it with a hobby knife and I have so much difficulty trying to cut it that I eventually just decided to switch to a different method. A friend of mine recommended I just cut all the pieces and cut all the corners until I have roughly the shape of a circle and then I can sand it smooth from there. I live in a very small apartment, so having all kinds of power tools and all kinds of very specific uh, pieces of equipment uh, is not really feasible for me. Here I stain all the pieces again. What I should have done was just added more ink to the water and made the whole process faster, but hindsight is 2020. Now I decided to start seeing exactly how many of these scale pieces of lumber it would take to cover about half of the tank. From there I could decide how many scale pieces of lumber I would need to cut out. Here you can see that I assembled the bottom of the water tower. I stood all the pieces up onto the scale lumber that was necessary and then added all the cross bracing. I used a gel type of super glue to fasten it all together. Yes, I do own various types of 
model glue, but I prefer this super glue because of the way everything immediately fits together and solidifies together. Here you can see I start to assemble the water tower by taking the wood slats and pasting them right on, using the cardboard dowel as kind of the shape maker for this tower tank. I had to carefully place each piece because the glue solidifies so quickly. I didn't want it to solidify the pieces in the wrong shape or the wrong spacing. I also had to vary the pieces back and forth because some pieces are a darker wood color and some are a lighter wood color. But what's really cool about dyeing these pieces of wood with India ink is that they almost kind of appear to have different types of wood grain, as if it's something like quilted maple or walnut. It's very interesting how each piece can look so different. But right now I am assembling the spout frame. This is the frame that holds the spout to the tower. You won't see the entire process because the cameras kept losing battery and each one needed to be recharged. But you can see I kind of add the metal rod between the two pieces of wood there. That will hold the actual spout together. Now I add the pulleys. Now you can see I am working on the roof. The way I do this is by pre-measuring out a triangle piece and then I start forming the octagonal roof. I cut it out and then I tape together the two ends of the roof to make a cone shape. Again, it is octagonal. And then I start adding the black roof paper. It's almost like resume paper, except it's colored black. And from there, I will start layering the pieces together to make a almost tar paper roof kind of appearance. You won't see that because unfortunately, the camera was pointed all the way down and I was practically holding this thing, you know, up against me while I was working on it so I could get a closer view. I tried various types of glue and adhesive, but what I really needed was a very simple school glue stick, which I normally keep with me, but I did not have a glue stick with me, so I used Elmer's glue, which unfortunately doesn't have quite the look I'm looking for, but it's what I had. Now you can see the end result. We have the completed water tower. There are one or two things missing from it, such as the ladder and the mechanism that allows the water to flow through the pipe. The, the valve that is, but ultimately you can see what it looks like and those details will be added in later. I was just in a very uh, tight space of time. It was a crunch for time basically, but this is what it looks like and I, I quite like it. It could use some weathering, but at the same time, there's something about the newness of it that I kind of like. Not everything on the layout has to look old and that's kind of how I feel about things. The little outhouse next to it was the very first thing I ever scratch built for this layout, and the water tower eclipses it in both detail and size, so it's pretty interesting to see the differences between the two. Anyway folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it kind of fun and enlightening, and uh, join me next time for the next updates to the railroad layout. See you then. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below. For more stories on the architecture, engineering, and history of the Steam Age, make sure to subscribe. You can support me by either becoming a Patreon member or channel member, or you can help donate to my transatlantic voyage to the UK. Links and information are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.